everyone and welcome back to this new video um, Today has been a special day because it's been um, exceptionally hot today <laughs> and it's um, the end of the day right now so the sun is going to go gradually down so the video may get a bit more dark, darker as it goes along but I still really wanted to do this video because Basically, I acquired this um, piece of furniture to put all of my books and my partner's books as well and it's been, first of all, a bargain <laughs> because I got the whole piece of furniture um, for about, no, specifically <laughs> 40 euros which is not a lot I got it second hand and I just wanted to show it to you because it gave me the opportunity of really rediscovering the book the books that I own but also discover my girlfriend's books and it was really interesting to just see both our books you know collide and how they work together so we've organized all of that on Monday when we received the shelves so I thought it would be interesting to show you how we organized everything and basically, yeah, talk to you about a couple of books I really enjoy and I really want to share with you, okay? Alright, so where should I start? <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna start with graphic novels because I just love this type of books, really I think to me they are like the easiest to read Definitely, because when I was younger I used to read a lot more than what I currently read, you know And um, even though right now it's more difficult for me to read like a whole novel um, Graphic novels are just super easy for me to read Always, so that's a good thing When I get, you know, a bit insecure about not reading that much or feeling like I spend, you know, too much time on social media instead of reading um, you know, reading a graphic novel always helps me, helps me, you know read something at the very least and feel like I can still read a book <laughs> so yeah, um, let's start with this part okay, so I'm not gonna be showing you and telling you about every single one of these graphic novels some you may already know some you may not but I just wanted to tell you about that one that one is Podum so Skin of a Man basically and it's a nice one because um, the story is of a woman in the medieval times who um, gets you know the skin of a man which is passed down from generation to generation of women in her family allowing them, you know, to explore the world as a man in, you know, a society that was very much, you know, only letting women do very small amounts of things and not, you know, in an independent way at all so um, that way it gives them a bit of a taste of freedom and it's really interesting to see how that, you know, woman, very obedient and almost shy at the beginning, just discovers more about herself um, through that and it's a really nice book I read rather quickly, it's not a long read but I actually very much enjoyed it and yeah, I would definitely recommend that to you <laughs> I don't know if it's translated in English though I'm sorry, it's a French thing a French book, I think and yeah um, there's actually quite of a sad story behind the book because I think the person who illustrated it actually died um, a bit after the release and I don't really know the whole story but yeah, there's a bit of a, you know, sad story as well behind the release of the book but nevertheless I really enjoyed it, you know, I think it was a nice one and this was actually a gift my girlfriend received and she borrowed it to me or let me read it when we were, you know, together but not living together yet and 
I really liked it, so <laughs> there you go. Bodum by Hubert and Zanzan. Zanzan. And at the back it's written Les femmes de notre famille, nous avons un secret. Nous avons en notre possession une peau d'homme. Nous l'appelons Lorenzo. Une fois la peau revêtue, nul ne peut se douter que tu n'es pas un garçon. Ainsi tu pourras voyager incognito dans le monde des hommes. So it's pretty much saying that in our family, we have a secret. The women of our family have, um, you know, that skin of a man. We call him Lorenzo, and once you wear the skin, no one can doubt that you're a boy. That way you will be able to travel the world of men, you know, without anyone knowing, basically. And I think it's actually a good book, and you know, no matter your gender, but I would feel like as a man sometimes it's hard to even realize that women have been, you know, living as, you know, second-class citizen for ever. <laughs> I was actually thinking of it today that when my grandmothers were born, women couldn't vote in my country. Meaning that, like, just two generations ago, women were not, you know, as free as I am myself. And this isn't something to be taken for granted. And I think that's one of the themes of this book, as well with, you know, gender identity and, you know, how you may feel even more at ease and yourself in the skin of a man when you are a woman. So I thought that was also, so I thought that was also um, an interesting topic to tackle. Okay, okay, so I'm not gonna be talking about Watchmen because I'm assuming you may already be familiar with it. Uh, it's pretty popular, there's been films and series on the Watchmen, and I love it, I really do, but I thought it would be more interesting to just talk about um, less known books today. And I feel like I actually can make so many videos like this, because I'm, this is just the second book I'm going to be telling you about, and I feel like I can talk about so many books for so long, so <laughs> this actually may become a series, you know. Alright, so second book is Radium Girls by C. And she's a French, you know, writer and illustrator. And you may be actually be already familiar with the story of the Radium Girls. This is the name that was given by the press to some women in the early 2000th century. And these women were actually working, you know, on watches and painting the watches, but they were actually painting it with like some radioactive iridium paint and they didn't know, they, were, they weren't told it was like damaging to their health and what they would do is like lick the, um, you know, brush once in a while, you know, repeatedly as part of the process to get it thinner and be able to do the numbers easily and the issue is that so many if not all of these women um, got really sick after that and yeah, it's been like a whole um, scandal back in the days it's been like a whole scandal back in the days because this is what this was actually like, you know, a big reveal for people that companies and corporations don't always actually protect their workers and you know, it was really interesting to, you know, have that book really t say their stories of these women, you know, and, you know, it's something to read the story on the news, but it's something else to feel like you get their voice and their story being told from their point of view. So this is like a very actually emotional book. I, yeah, it's difficult to not be so, so sad at the end for them. And yeah, it was so good. <laughs> And I was already following um, the illustrator, see, on social media because I really like her style. And what's interesting is that in this book she actually used very few colors, you know, in her palette to have like that very minimal um, look overall. 
and also there are some like glow-in-the-dark um, effects especially on the cover I don't think you can see it exactly but you can see like their faces glow in the dark and it's a really nice touch up so yeah that one I really 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 love although it's so super super sad <laughs> okay um there you go for that one okay so next one is Philippette et Vénère by Lucrèce Andréae and what the title basically means is like um, the scary one and the angry one, basically, roughly. And this is the story of two sisters. So you've got the first one here, which is actually like, um, it's about a lot of, you know, how you take action to change the world and how much you are okay with the status quo, basically. Because that first sister, you know, pays a visit to the other one and that one is really like, you know, not doing anything really to, you know, um, take action into um, charities or anything, basically. But the second sister, that one, which is, um, you could say, the angry one, is actually very dedicated to working with these charities in a, you know, you know, free way. She's not being paid or anything, but it's really like what she wants to do with her life. And she's very judgmental of people like her sister, basically not doing anything and acting like, you know, um, you know, being maybe too moderate in her political um, discussions. Whereas, yeah, that one is much more radical. And it's very interesting, you know, no matter your political standpoint, you know, just, you know, how, when is being too radical and when is it, you know, not enough to just be okay with what's going on and waiting for um, the government to make the changes. And it's actually very interesting to see these two people clash and have different views on, you know, how we can make the world a better place. And it's very interesting because it's all also giving like a, an inside view of, you know, certain charities where they're trying to make the good thing, but, you know, it's run by humans, people with flaws, and you still get, you know, um, some um, power dynamics and issues within these charities as well. So it's like giving you a very nuanced um, approach and view on this kind of, you know, people and organizations, yeah. So it's very good. Um, it, this one is longer than the other ones, but it was a pleasure to read it. And yeah, I just feel like, you know, graphic novels are never really this long to read. It's easy for me when I, it sounds like I'm a preschooler, but when there are pictures, I think it's easier to read the book. <laughs> so yeah, I really enjoyed that one as well. And I may try to, yeah, find other types of book now. We may be moving on to other things than graphic novels from now on. So these are like pocket books, you know, classics and not so classics. So you've got, you know, very much um, classic literature, but you also have a lot of sci-fi, I noticed. Okay, now on to a very classic, um, Cyrano de Bergerac by Edmond Rostand. And I think that one, um, I had to read when I was back in school, when I was maybe like 15 or so, and I remember loving it so, so much. I read it a couple of times throughout the years, but um, I'm so sorry for people, you know, reading like a translation of it, because the whole book is, you know, having rhymes throughout the lines, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous book, so emotional and an amazing work of art, basically, and I don't know if you're familiar with the story, but basically, um, you might actually know the story because it's been, you know, uh, internationally acclaimed, and I think there's actually um, a film planned to be released very soon. I think I saw like a, a trailer or something, trailer for it. So um, there's a new film coming onto that story about that story, and basically. You've got that man, Cyrano de Bergerac, who's um, notoriously known as being like a very eloquent person 
and you know very fine with words but also that's a person that's deeply in love with a woman he thinks he cannot ever you know reach and get to ever named Roxanne and the thing is that um, he feels that way because he has like a very big and large and long nose and people basically make fun of it and make fun of him because he's not like beautiful um, according to him and you know society and what he does is, is that he finds another man who's also very much in love with Roxanne but the thing is that that man is pretty you know, handsome, but he's not that wise and he's not very good with writing and poetry and, you know, telling her how much he cares about her. So they basically make an alliance where Cyrano tells the other guy what to say to Roxanne. And the deeply horrible thing is that Roxanne basically, basically you know, falls in love with that man, but through Cyrano's words. So she basically is in love with Cyrano's mind, you know, and intelligence, but she thinks, well, it's the other guy, you know, creating all of these things he's saying to her, so it's gorgeous, <laughs> it's beautiful, and I love that book, and I cannot recommend it enough, and yeah, I think that's it. Now I wanted to show you, like, the part of the shelf that's dedicated to anything related to the channel, so at the back you've got like the catalogue of the galaxy which I used so many times before in my videos on stream and you also have a lot of books that I've been, you know, receiving from the PO Box and from all of you so thank you so 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 much for all of them I haven't read them all just yet but I'm so so grateful that you sent me these and this is where I'm keeping, yeah, basically what I got from you, what I've shared with you in the past and anything related to the channel. Now that part is um, basically dedicated to, you know, autobiography, biographies and anything, you know, related to celebrities, you know. Either it's people, you know, writing a book, trying to help you through their experience or, yeah, straight up biography like for V and Westwood, for example, or Kim Gordon. And finally, that part is about anything, you know, esoteric or, you know, pseudoscience. So nothing proven scientifically, but things I find very interesting and I just want to know more about, basically. And one of these books I wanted actually to tell you about is this one, Le Livre des Symboles, which um, actually my moderator, Lisela, um, bought me. Thank you so, so much, Lisela. And this book is a gold mine because I've been very interested in, you know, in um, symbolism, basically, and the meaning of having like a specific object or shape or, you know, anything in your art. And I really want to, you know, get more thought and meaning in such details, basically. So that book I really enjoy because this is the kind of book where you have like very small chapters and you can just run through it and look for one specific item and just, you know, open a, a page and, you know, just, you don't have to read it page by page, really. So I like that kind of book when I feel like I can just read a couple pages, you know, close it, come back the other day and do something else. And I just love that kind of, of things, basically. So, yeah, so grateful for this and... Yeah, I'm very grateful, basically, and I really hope to be using it to improve my art. Yeah. So I think that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, the themes, the book I mentioned. Um, yeah. Let me know if you think I should be doing more of these. I actually think it's a bit funny because I basically grew up, you know, watching YouTube videos. And I remember when I was a teen... It was like a trope or something. I would see all the time, you know, people uh, making a video in front of their books. Like, <laughs> I don't know why everyone was doing it back in the days, but it's like, I know what I'm saying, I read books. <laughs> so yeah, let me know if you liked it. 
I know I can actually tell you a lot more about a lot more books if you want to. I could be making maybe a video with only books in English. I could be also adding some readings, you know, reading a couple pages in the next video if you like it. So you let me know. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.